Hey y'all, it's time to paint. All right, first of all, I want to mention if you're coming in on this video and you haven't watched the mixing video for this particular session, um, you might wanna stop and go back to that one. Um, it's just um, mixing the paint session for session one, um, a sunset one, session one, I think. I'll have to put that in, in the comments down below. But anyway, that would be the better place to start. It's a fairly long video um, on just mixing the paint for this particular painting. And this is the photograph we're using, if you're unfamiliar with what we're doing. And um, I'm just gonna say, let's get started. I'm going to mention just a couple of things again. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here behind the, the phone, uh, about, which is what I'm taping on. So you can, you can see that I'm, I'm having to look around it. <laughs> if there's times when I sound or, or um, seem to be a little discombobulated, it's because I can't really see the canvas so well. I'm having to lean to one side or I'm having to move the phone to one side to look at the canvas. So this is, um, this has definitely a learning curve on it. Just be patient with me. All right, now let's talk about this little photograph a bit. First of all, we had discussed in the in the mixing video that uh, the photograph, what I'm doing, we're gonna be working on just the sky area, the background sky area today. And it's gonna be done just basically in two sections. Um, we're coming down about, you can see these little marks that I have on the photograph itself. But we're coming down about halfway with our blues for this upper sky tone we're totally ignoring these clouds. That will be in the next session. These clouds and these clouds will not be touching them. All right, now all of this, this background color right here, this Naples color and this, this uh, peachy pink color, orangey pink color, whatever color you wanna call it, that will be coming up to the halfway mark as well. So it'll be, you know, the, the bottom, Coming up from the bottom, you'll come up about a, um, a quarter of the way, and then between the one quarter and the one half mark, we're gonna put a band of these colors all the way across there. And uh, of course, you can see right there, we'll have the, the mountain coming down. And then when we come back next week, we'll have this line of clouds and all of these clouds up here in the sky. So today, we're just basically gonna be getting the blues on, and these creamy colors and peachy colors down in here. And so there's not a whole lot of um, intense work today. Let's just get the color on. All right, now, starting out with just a, a flat brush, and I'm also starting out with my lightest color. Take your bluest, your blue and lightest color and let's just let's just get some color on here. And let me mention real quickly, my my canvas is wood, and they're homemade. Hugh makes them for me. He makes he does an excellent excellent job. But I've asked him just to throw some together for me in times past, just some practice canvases. And you can see where I threw some gesso on these, sanded them a little bit, so they're rough. You're going to see a lot of rough edges. Um, where I wasn't worried about spending the time to make them perfect for this session or for, for these painting sessions. So they're just, um, they're just what they are. Just ignore it. My canvas is probably about, um, I don't know, 12 by 16 maybe. I'm not sure. I haven't measured it. And I want to mention that I'm going to be painting around the outside edge of my canvas. Let me show you what I'm doing. Um, because I don't want to frame it. This is called the gallery wrap effect. Um, you might want to do this if you know you're not going to frame your painting. If you'd like to be able to just hang it on the, the wall. And you don't have to make the edge part real, real, really intense. Um, that's just, that's not necessary. 
just kind of general you know make sure you're carrying the color on around it can be real simple looking without a lot of um, detail but now they do make canvases that are specifically for the gallery wrap and most of the time instead of being like three quarters of an inch deep they're more like a half an inch to two inches deep and the edges are finished much much nicer so that's just totally up to you. Now you can see, hopefully you can see, how light this sky is. And it comes down kind of at a little swashy angle. We're going to put this sky in. When we come back to put the clouds on, we may put another layer of um, white over top of this area right in here. Because it is very, very, very light. But for today, we're just going to get our color on. All right, up here in this area, we want this darker blue. So let's get our some let's get some darker blue up here. I make it almost like a little bowl going up one side and up to the other corner, swooshing down in the middle. And then since I'm doing the gallery wrap thing, oops, that's a big chunk of paint going on. Let's uh, let's go on around the top right here. And you probably hear me popping paint on there, but you don't see me. I'm limited in how far back I can move move this camera without totally rearranging it. It took a minute to get it set up, so that's the reason I'm not turning it around. To say hi. <laughs> I'll just just say hi off camera. All right, now, and then remember we mixed um, a color that was kind of a, almost a greenish hue. Well, that's where we're gonna bring this one in, right here. I just thought that added a, a nice little detail. I'm going to take it over above that light color just a little bit. And let's put it up the side. All right, now because we're working with... Um, with Alkid, or I'm working with Alkid, I don't know if y'all are or not. Uh, Alkid is a faster drying paint. I don't want to leave it too long to start drying on me, but I, I want to bring this down here a little bit further. Make sure I get down to this halfway point. All right. Um, but because I don't want this to start drying on me too much, I'm going to use my blue paper towels. Remember the blue paper towels, the shop towels. I use those to blot my paint because I don't want to leave a whole lot of paint on here. I know that um, in the art world, there's something very, very sacred apparently about brush marks. I'm not sure what I'm, I'm self-taught. <laughs> so I'm not sure what that sacredness is supposed to be about, but I don't like brush marks. Um, I just tend to not leave any brush marks on my painting. So that uh, probably moves me out of the league of those who would be considered, um, you know, in the know. I don't know. All right. Let's see if I got enough off. Uh, I think so. Uh, there's a little bit more up there. All right, I'm going to fold this down so I can use the back side of it and just blot this up here just a little bit more. Just a little bit more paint on it than I wanted to leave. And it, right here's one more spot. All right. Now, I'm going to use my really big brush as opposed to, you know, I, I told y'all that 
you could uh, go into the children's section at Michael's or somewhere and pick up these brushes. And they work just fine. The only difference is they take more time. So as I'm doing this, realize that yours, if you're using these little brushes, it's gonna just take you more time to blend these colors out. And I'll probably end up using those anyway. I'm gonna to have to move this, this over just a little bit so I have room to, to trounce. All right, starting in your lightest color. And you don't wanna remove all the color from your painting, from your canvas. You just want to blend those little strokes of brush marks out. And now I will mention right here that sometimes if your paint is um, just coming off too much, you can, you can go back the next day and apply another layer and I have done that. I have done that even on a really big painting. So it's not a it's not a detrimental thing. It's just and for some reason, you know, when I'm working in greens or darker colors, it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue. But working in these pale colors, you can see the white kind of shining through. That's all right. We can fix it. It is cold outside, guys. I don't know what it, what it is in your area. Today is, let me see, what is today? October the 8th. Uh, this painting will be going out tomorrow on October the 9th. I thought it was the 10th, but no, it is the 9th. And um, I don't know that it's ever even hit 60 degrees today. Maybe not even that, but it's chilly. Now where these colors are coming together, I'm going to have to get a clean paintbrush in just a minute and blend them together a little bit. But the more, more gently you tap, the less color your paintbrush will pull off. Keep that in mind. But tomorrow, if you decide you need to go back, and I, I won't on these paintings because my goal is just to, to teach the concepts and you guys can you guys can do the extra work <laughs> so there there you go um, but uh, if you decide that you're seeing too much white coming through on your canvas then definitely tomorrow go through and put another layer just do it exactly the way we're doing it now and you'll be all set for the next class and all I'm doing right here is just trying to blend these, these colors where everything comes together a little bit. And now keep in mind that I shouldn't have used the same paintbrush because then you blend that other color down in here, which I'm not wanting to do. But keep in mind that the vast majority of this sky is going to be covered with clouds. With clouds of some type. So don't don't feel like you have to just stress over everything okay and the nice thing about you know when you're painting if you have an area that that you just don't you're not crazy about and you want to cover it up that you can do you might have to work a little bit on making it look you know not like an afterthought, <laughs> but typically, typically you can disguise things that didn't work out exactly the way you wanted them to. And uh, now, if I want to continue using the same brush, let me show up up here on this. Um, and there's not a whole lot of paint on it. Sometimes you can just scrub the paint color out of it like that, and just. Then bring it back to your painting area. Just keep that uh, excess color wiped out of it.
All right. I can't back my head up with the camera in front of me to see if I've got everything blended well. So a little bit of this is guesswork, guys. I think we're going to call that okay. All right. Now before I go on down into this lower one third, or lower one quarter, whatever, um, you can see there's there's some some really light that there's clouds in here, some white clouds, excuse me, back in here, and along this line right here, and I I do like the effect with the clouds, um, the, because that sunshine is absolutely catching those clouds nicely and I want those clouds to be there. So I'm going to take just some pure white and the reason I'm going to take some pure white is because it will blend in with the blue that you know with the paint being wet it will blend in with the blue we'll just uh, so it's not going to be white white. I want them to just be a nice, nice bright color where you can see that the, the sun is hitting those clouds in the back. And they, they kind of just fade up. So we want them to just kind of disappear as they Fade into the blue up above them. And when we come back next Monday to work on this, we may add just another layer. We're not going to get them probably as, as white as I'd like simply because the paint behind them is wet. So sometimes you have to just let the painting dry a bit before you can get the effects that you want. <coughs> Excuse me. I have some allergy issues going on today. My eyes are burning and my throat is scratchy. And um, I'm sneezing and coughing a bit. So, but the good thing is we had maybe of a mild frost last night which might be bringing us to the end of the goldenrod and ragweed season I'm not not sure but we'll hope for it anyway you can see I've got a little bit of pears here and there you can take the edge of your paintbrush and just very very gently pick those hairs up if you go too hard you're gonna you're gonna cut your paint you'll have to fix the paint which isn't a big deal just trying to thin that paint just a little bit let me get my blue towel over here and take some of the paint out of my brush and this is Kind of a little bit of a time-consuming process because of the way I paint. It's it's a little bit um, tedious at times. I understand that. Believe me. Having painted paintings that are five foot tall and ten feet wide, and most of my paintings over my painting career have been large, average sizes six, seven feet wide or tall, depending on whether they're a horizontal or a um, a vertical and you can see down in down in here we've got that same thing a lot of light colors a lot of white clouds in that far distant area behind the other up close and intense clouds so let's just put a representation of them on there and and we see there's some little blips of of um, Clouds shooting out, little white clouds. Can you see that? Let me see. I wish I had a pointer. 
uh, little blips of white here and there. And I'm not sure if those are jet streams. And I don't really want it to look like a jet stream in the painting. But I do like the effect. So I think I'll put those clouds up there. But I'm, I'm going to make them you know, mess, less straight and just give them some uh, volume here and there. That's where one of them shoots up from. I see the, the girls, our cattle girls walking, changing, going to a different field. I love watching them. And the baby cows just, they cut a shine. They run along with their mamas, but they play with each other and kick around and act silly. Just like little kids. This is where you can just use your imagination. Just make clouds however you want them to look. It's almost like you can't go wrong with a cloud other than to just make it too opaque in spots. If you just put a blobs of white on there and you never, you know, thin them around the edges or, you know, make them look thicker in certain areas they will look artificial so you have to make sure that you're giving them the feel now sometimes you know a very thick thundercloud will not have any thinning around the edges they'll they will be very thick around the edges so it just depends on what your what kind of crowd cloud you're creating Still hairs as we go. I've got right in here, I've got some more uh, clouds in this area right here. Just add in what you know the the areas that I really like and I, I want to maintain. Hold on a minute, got a sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, and just keeping in mind that with a photograph, your photograph is just truly your reference. You don't have to make it exact. Unless, and you know, if you're painting someone's home homestead or, um, you know, your family doggy or whatever, and you want it to be exact, you don't have to. You don't have to stay there with um, a photograph. It's all totally your choice. I like um, I like messing around with it a little bit when I'm painting a scenery most of the time I will get rid of power lines and you know um, anything that's specifically more modern that because I, I kind of like to keep them like they were you know might have been a hundred years ago or so but I don't know sometimes it's it's the more modern aspects that will create the interest so you just have to have to bring bring out what looks interesting to you. Okay, this little area over here, I want to put some clouds in right there. But I'm also going to want to yellow that up just a teeny tiny, teeny tiny tiny bit. Because if 
you can see in our photograph, just right there on the very edge. It just looks a little bit warmer in these white clouds. Bring this white on around the edge a little bit. Doesn't have to be detailed in any respect. Now, as thin as I put this paint on, it will start drying pretty quickly. You might even be able to go back and and do something with your clouds. Add that extra layer of, of cloud before you finish if you want to take that time to do that. And remember, the softer you tap, the more gentle your blend will be. And that's just a practice thing, guys. It's just something I found out years and years ago. When I first started painting, I just um, messing around with my paintbrushes, found out this was the best way to blend paint for me to get the effect that I wanted. All right, now what I'm doing over here, I'm not going to turn the camera, but I am just slightly, lightly, lightly blending some white with, um, with a little bit of the Naples yellow. And like I had said at one other time, sometimes, you know, these these little little bits of color change don't really look like they amount to enough to even make them worth the time but sometimes the the slightest color change can be just the just the ticket for giving giving your paintage a bit more of a real look uh, a bit, bit more of a I don't know The reality of it, 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 something about it that will just draw your eyes and make you feel like, you know, it's not just so flat. It, it will have some depth to it. And so I, I try to, I try to work with those, those colors when I see them, when I see them come up, I try not to ignore them, uh, that there might just be just a little bit of. A reason for that that our brain might recognize and be looking for if we didn't add it you know and I'm, I'm doing that also with with these uh, clouds over here on this on this right hand side on the bottom because um, I can see just there again just a little bit of yellow in there let's wipe our brush off a little bit so we can blend up at the top of it just a bit, lighten that edge. I hear a motor running outside. I'm thinking somebody's washing their house. My, my house desperately needs that to be done. Something that I intend to make happen before the end of the fall. Okay, now let me pull this camera back so that I can see the direction I'm going. Um, hmm. I don't like I don't like how green how green that area is compared to the blue that it's beside. I think I went a little green with it. 
All right, let's fix it. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of the white or of the lighter blue and the medium blue. The blue that I used here and the blue that I used over there. And just blend those edges together a little bit and bring it down into Sometimes you just have to mess around with something to see how it needs to be fixed. This may or may not fix what I want. I might have to do something different. Work the edge over just a little bit so that it's not a not coming to a sudden wall. Okay, so I think part of my problem that I was originally seeing was this shadow from the light. Do you see that? So maybe I didn't have a color problem after all. But anyway, <laughs> whatever it was, I, I think I fixed it. <laughs> Either by moving the lamp or, or blending some paint out. Alright, oops, sorry guys, that will not be the last time I bump you, I'm pretty certain. That's funny, <laughs> it's trying to paint a shadow out. There's another little, little hair, little brush, brush hair. Oh. It's not working, let's blend it back out and then go after the brush. And let me show you the kind of brush that I usually use to take care of that. This guy. See how gnarly he is? But he's perfect because you can just barely touch him and he gets it. He's a good guy. Everybody should have a gnarly brush, stiff bristled brush to grab stray hairs with. Okay, and here's some little blips of whatever they are. But they're not wanting to come off. And you'll have to take your brush, your little, one of your little trouncing brushes, and blend that paint again. It's okay, not a problem. Just gently. If you see any areas where you've just got kind of a bloppy looking spot, whether it's the white or the blue or whatever, whatever, just fix it while you're looking at it. Because otherwise, 
you'll come back tomorrow and you'll think, well, I don't remember that being there. <laughs> and it will be dry and you can't fix it. But we can hide it, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's almost impossible to hide something because by doing so, it actually makes it look like you've fixed it. Like you've worked on having to fix something that you shouldn't have. All right. I think I'm going to call that sky good enough. And you can, you can see, I don't know if you can tell, you know, through the camera or not that the color isn't exact to the photograph. And I, I explained that, um, because we're using such a limited palette, we're going to have to just uh, settle on colors that we're happy with and some of the things that we're not going to be able to get exactly. But as we're able to, over the course of the next year or two, we'll increase our color palettes. And I just didn't want to overwhelm you guys to begin with because I use probably about 25 different colors in order to be able to get the exact colors that I want. Um, and it can be can be truly a, an overwhelming expense. And that's something I did not want us to have to deal with to begin with. So that's the reason we are doing it this way. All right, now looking back at our photograph, you can see that the first bits of sky that are behind these clouds, if that's our halfway mark right there, then they're just under that. So we're gonna go over here. Our halfway mark is where we came we're just going to work from that and work down to about right here with this band of color, okay? So we're going to work, that it'll be well hidden by our, our clouds, but I just want the paint there so that I'm not limited. I don't have to try to work around a spot where I might not have put color that I should have. So we're going to come up halfway to where our blue line is at least and above, put our color in, blend it out and that will be that will be our session for today okay um let's start with let me find my little brush you might want to find just a a little fat or flat or angled brush i'm going to use this little angled brush it doesn't matter but um, i'm going to use the paint that i had mixed that was um Let me see. It was the Windsor and the Naples. The Windsor Lemon and the Naples. Okay. And let's put it right there along the area where our sun, where our sunlight is going to be, our sunshine, our sun ball. <laughs> I'll get it out in a minute. Just be patient with me. I mixed this paint this morning. And uh, took some time out taking care of my critters and hanging some laundry. And about let it dry. I had it covered over with a piece of parchment paper, but I should have laid something damp over top of it, I guess. Maybe some damp blue towels, but I did it. Well, I'll have to come back after that in a minute. All right. And down here's the, come all the way down to the quarter, quarter mark, even though we know we're not going to need that. Let me just get this. That's better. That little blip, I just I didn't mix much of it, and because of that, it got thick on me. All right. Now, the next color that we're going to use it's just pretty much the pure na maples, uh, no, pure Naples. I'll get it in a minute. And actually, I think that this Naples I had mixed it with a little bit of white. So this is the Naples that we mixed with just a little bit of white. Pull it all the way over to the edge of your painting, and wrap it around. Remember that. We're doing the 
wrap right now. And I'm not going to do the wrap on, on that side simply because that's where the mountain will be. I do know that, so I'm not worried about that. All right. And let's just go ahead and come on down with that, even though we're going to blend some other color into it in a minute. Now the, the color, the lighter color that we had mixed with um, the Naples and the Windsor Lemon, or the Windsor Red, excuse me, let's bring that along right in there. And then the darker color that was also the Naples and the Windsor Red. Let's bring it along this bottom section, even along underneath of our sunshine area right there, around the edge. All right. Now we'll be using that quite a, quite a bit up in the clouds, so we'll get to pick up some more because that's such a pretty color. It really is. We'll get to pick up some more of that in a little while. Or not this session, but in the next session. All right. Now just make sure that you're down at least a quarter of the way on your painting. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to, just to be safe, I'm just going to go ahead and go on over there underneath where the sun is. I know that we won't see that, but I want to make sure that it's there. All right, next stop is your blue paper towels. Move our photo. And this will have to blot twice, I'm pretty certain, because it was getting thick and kind of gloppy. And I put it on pretty thick. So, and I want to mention about the blue towels in case I haven't at some point. Um, you know, if you if you have a lot of old T-shirts, or you can you know have your families save old T-shirts for you for cleaning your brushes, that's wonderful. Um, it really doesn't work so well with pulling the the paint off of off of um, a canvas though, because it will kind of stick and it will pull more paint than you want. Um, but it is good for cleaning brushes. I try to make my blue brush, my blue towels go as far as I can by even when they've got a lot of paint on them, I will open them up and let them hang on something to dry. Um, once they've dried, if you've got a, an area on them that hasn't doesn't have any paint where you've blotted, you can use that again to. Or you can use that, yeah, you can use that again to blot. But if it's got paint on it, you can still use that for cleaning your brushes. So just use use your use your blue towels for as long as you possibly can. Just use them up good. Remember, the more gently you tap, the less um, 
paint you'll take off and that's good because most of the time you just don't want to take off a whole lot of paint you'll leave you'll leave white spots shining through and when you're just wanting to blend just one little paint strip with another just use these that's that's where I love to use these little brushes if I'm trying to blend a big area I like my big huge mammoth brushes because it just speeds things up but these will do the job just anywhere you need it so never feel like you have to have those big brushes they're just a, they're just a time saver that's it they don't do the job any better they're just a time saver Now, you will see this thick line that I was talking about where the two colors meet. Uh, instead of blotting that again, because I don't want to mess with my color top or bottom, I'm just going to trounce it out. Just keep him, the paint wiped out of my brush. Because this, this whole little area right here, of course, will be hidden by the clouds. I just don't want there to be a, a thick little line that shows shows through our paint some intense color right there y'all but it will very much be toned down when we start putting color over top of it and a row of mountains in front of it and let's just put a little representation where a little sun's going to be our sun is going to be over about a let me see this is halfway quarter and then our sun is going to be up between a third or between a quarter and a half got hairs going on hold on so somewhere along about right there That was awkward. All right. Let's try it with a It's just a representation cuz it's going to be totally co covered over anyway. All right. I still have some little thick spots on it. I think our color's okay. The sky is not exactly the same color blue by a long shot, but it's, a, it's an okay blue. If I had uh, maybe a cerulean, if I'd used a cerulean blue, I could have gotten that, that color I wanted, but that's okay. We're learning in a lot of different ways and we're good I think I just wiped paint on my nose scratching the end of it let's get a few of these little blips of hair out I hear a chicken mama just laid an egg do you hear I don't know if you can hear that through the phone or not There's another hair. Just go through and try to try to get those hairs out before your paint dries. I 
All right. I think that that's going to, I think that's going to be enough color on that to get it started. And um, next time we come back, next Monday, we'll be working on these clouds. Now these, these mountains are going to be off in the distance a bit. Um, we maybe have two sessions on the clouds before we start working on the mountains. So my goal, like I've told you before, okay, uh, I've got red eyes because my eyes are burning. <laughs> Where's my, my camera lenses? There they are. Okay. I wanted to know where to, where to look. I never know where to look when I'm looking at the big face of the, mount, uh, of the camera. So <clears throat> I've probably got red eyes. I feel like I have red eyes. They're burning. Um, we're going to probably have at least four weeks on this painting. Um, I won't guarantee it won't take a little longer than that. Um, but you know, I want us to, I want us to enjoy the process. Each week, it's looking like each week it will be the easier thing to do to go ahead and have a, a color blending class uh, or a color blending video for that painting or for that session instead of try, just trying to do the, because I can't move the camera around that much. This, I think, is working out better than the one that I did seven months ago because I can, I can keep the painting or the, the camera stationary looking at the painting. Um, it's really a trip trying to paint around the camera with it being right there in front of me, but it, it's okay. I'm getting used to it, and pretty soon I won't even notice it. Y'all might notice it because I'll probably continue jostling it with my knee. <laughs> okay, and um, let me see. So the new lineup will be that on Mondays there'll be two videos out. One will be the mixing of the paint and the other one will be the the painting on the canvas itself and then through that week any questions you have please put them in the comments below so that i have a chance to look at them and to think about my responses and on thursday evening if i actually have to come in here you know, and sit down with paintbrush to, to answer a question, I need to be able to have time to do that. So try to try to get those questions in by Thursday afternoon. And then I will get the everything compiled into, like if there's five people that have the same question, obviously I just want to answer it one time. So I can get everything compiled, all the questions compiled, and sit down with the camera and just go through the answers to the best of my ability. Um, that might give me a little time to actually research an answer if I don't have a good answer for your question. Um, and uh, let me see, what else? So that's that's kind of gonna be it. For the painting videos, we'll have, again, two paint two videos on Monday and one video on Friday. But uh, I'm I'm excited about this. I think it'll get uh, easier, probably run a little faster. You have to remember that I've only, I have not painted much in um, going on seven years. So I'm, I, it's taken me a while to kind of get back in the groove of it as I get more familiar and comfortable with it. Um, we'll move along faster and it's just going to be a good time. And y'all just don't know how much I appreciate you and how much um, I'm glad to be moving back into this uh, abandoned area of my life. I think that it's going to be really good for my emotional healing. And uh, yeah, so my nose is burning too. <laughs> my eyes are red, my nose is burning. All right, girls, tomorrow I'm building a dog fence. That's something that needs to be done because where there where our two dog lots come together and <clears throat> there's you know we have a wire of course between them, but uh, for some reason my old dogs and Aaron's young dogs they just want to growl at each other through the fence and it's extraordinarily annoying, 
And uh, at times, if they get their heads too close to each other, somebody might get a lip bitten. I'm going to prevent that because I'm putting like a privacy fence all the way down that will divide them so they can no longer see each other. And uh, even if they can see each other and fuss, I don't have to worry about them reaching through the fence and hurting each other. And I don't understand it. I mean, they're all sweet dogs and my dogs on my end don't fight with each other and Aaron's dogs on his end don't fight with each other. They just want to fight with the, <laughs> it's like, like living in a little neighborhood somewhere and you have two street gangs. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> all right. Well, I love you much. I'll be popping in and out this week with my little shorts. I love doing those shorts. And other than that, I hope you enjoy painting this week. And I'll talk to you later. Love you.